Welcome, FNUS57 here. Once again, I'm on my Xbox One to bring you yet another video. In today's video, we will be showcasing how to complete the Master Difficulty Horde Frenzy on the brand new map, Mercy. So, this is Gears 5. The map is new to Gears 5, but it is not new to the Gears of War franchise. I believe this is a Gears 3 map, if I remember correctly, but it honestly has been ages since I played it. So, quick shout out to my friends here, Misfit Casper, Nasty, and Metal for helping me out with this video. And I'm going to go ahead and say this, that this map, I believe, is going to be a pain in the ass. Uh, so I've done some testing with where the taps spawn, and there really isn't a good setup. What I believe to be the most efficient setup for this is going to be to run a mechanic, two pilots, jack, and a demo. Uh, so for mechanic, it's a pretty standard card setup for this map. Um, but that's, you know, neither here nor there, really. I run Healing Repair, Efficient Fabrication, Overclocked Locker, Ingenuity, and Reinforced Fabrication, especially due to the fact that we are running so many explosive classes. Your Jack probably is going to be like a 75% combat build. You really only need Healing Reach on, and as long as your demo is able to kill the bosses, you should be okay. So... What makes this map difficult, you ask? Well, it's really just the way this map is designed. This map is actually not designed very well for the Gears 5 Horde mechanics. Originally, when the map was introduced to the Gears of War franchise, you didn't have flying enemies, and the explosive damage was scaled a little bit differently. So now that you have flying enemies and the blast radius on a frag grenade is as large as it is, a single explosive can basically wipe the majority, if not the entirety, of your team. That's why I go ahead and recommend that you bring a jack or technically a combat medic. There's going to be two spots that are more ideal than other spots for this map. So just keep that in mind when you're going through and setting up. Now let me know in the comment section down below if uh, you have another spot that you found that works out better for you or if you happen to find a really good tap spawn. But I'll tell you what isn't very difficult to do is to make sure that you never miss another video guide and you can do so by making sure that you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. And if you enjoy this video, don't forget to tap that like button. It really helps me out with the searchability of videos here on YouTube. So continuing on with this video, you'll notice, of course, we're all max level, max re-up. But if we look at the map before we pick up the fabricator, there's basically no good areas to set up. Library and sanctuary are the only good areas. I'm hoping the taps are as close to the library as possible. Eh. About as good as we can hope for on this map. Help me secure the tent. Fabricator deployed. Definitely going to need some help to move out these barriers real quick. Here's the first level 4 locker. I have a second level one locker. I'm just hiding it behind the column here. Actually, I can level that up. Now it's level two. So pretty much the setup on this map is going to be 
personal preference, really, at the end of the day, but you really have two better than other spots that you can set up. So like I said, the spot that I prefer is going to be this library spot. And the reason why I prefer this library spot is actually quite simply due to the fact that it has the same number of lanes, but it is the closest and most ideal for covering the taps. So the majority of the energy taps tend to spawn pretty much right around the balcony area out there, um, kind of like right there. They, they spawn around this library location. With that being said, I did 20 loads of loading the game um, on wave 9 of a horde frenzy so that all four energy taps would be available. And then I wanted to see what the energy tap spawn locations would be. Every single time that I did that, the energy tap spawned either here next to the library always keeping one of them up on the balcony or on the opposite side of the fountain. So that fountain in the center, there'd be an energy tap there, one over there, and then like one in the center just outside of the church or sanctuary as it's labeled on the map. The other spot that you can set up that works fairly well is sanctuary itself or also known as inside that church. So you can set up in either this spot or Sanctuary for a ideal outcome. However, I picked this spot due to the fact that it is much closer to the energy taps and will actually allow us to cover the energy taps a little bit easier. Now, as most of you know, if you don't keep the energy taps, it definitely makes your life more difficult. Uh, so I'll do one on repair cost, one on repair speed. That's about all we need. And we're going to try and keep these energy taps alive. Now for the purposes of this video, I am going to leave the gameplay for all 12 waves included. This way you can see how we handle different things. The only downside, there's two negatives to uh, setting up here in the library. The first is the fact that it's a very small enclosed space. So because of the fact it's a very small enclosed space, once again, there's not a lot of room for placement of fortifications or being able to separate those weapon lockers out. In other words, one explosive can be absolutely detrimental to multiple team members. There's other various things like juvies coming in that can be super frustrating as well. As a whole, this map is just super frustrating if I had to uh, say so myself. Now, the reason why we picked this particular team comp, at least thinking that it would be the most efficient, is so that you could position one pilot on these back stairs and one pilot on the front entrance where we spawn. By dividing the two pilots across both entrances, that allows you to stun lock the majority of the enemies coming through the entrances. It also prevents you from having to shift your fire from one door to the other. Now the downside to the team comp that we're running right now is the fact that you're actually going to need more fortifications. So it's quite a drain on yield fabricator, which is why having the energy taps is so important at this point. That's also why I waited till I had my first point in my perk before I went and actually um, repaired that one energy tap. 
So the first five waves will be a little difficult, but after that, it should get easier. You just have to make sure that you pick a dedicated spot when you play and you stay in that spot. It'll make your life a lot easier. Because we need three weapons lockers. You also need a fair deal of barriers, too. Alright, here's uh, the third locker. It's only at level two for the moment, but... Time's up. Here they come. Once you get that locker uh, set up, then it's a good idea to start working on these barriers and at least taking the front barriers and trying to get those up to level two as quickly as possible. I'm in the zone. Now you could also technically set up in the spawn or you could set up on the opposite side spawn if you wanted. I don't recommend those spots only because of the layout. So if you were to set up in the spawn, you'd be setting up in the short side of an L, which would expose you to fire from not only three individual directions, but the enemy would have the high ground and you would have no cover from flying units. I don't recommend the opposite spawn either for a similar reason. You don't have to worry about the enemy having the high ground on the opposite side, but you still have to worry about receiving crossing fire from multiple directions at the same time. Oh, yeah. I knew I was going to go down there. That was pretty much a, a terrible situation. Honestly, kind of surprised I didn't die, but I'll take it. We have to try to keep these energy taps alive at least as much as possible. Pro tip uh, for those of you that don't know, if you are playing as any engineer, make sure that you repair the fortification before upgrading it. You'll still have to pay the repair costs, but you'll pay the repair costs after your repair discount as opposed to paying the repair cost before your repair discount. That's something a lot of people don't actually know. Now, since we're dealing with more aggressive enemies, it's very important to make sure that we have these lockers upgraded. As long as we don't get a random explosive, though, this should be actually a fairly smooth run. Once you have the money, you can also put a set of barriers farther away to slow the enemies down a bit. Again, that goes back to the more aggressive enemies. It just makes the speed of everything more intense. Because not only do enemies move faster, but they shoot faster, so they technically deal more damage per second because they're shooting faster, even though the individual damage per shot is the same, but since they shoot faster, they do more damage per second. At least we have the energy taps. What was that? 
And obviously you want to try to get the power when it's still a double stack. Getting the power when it's still a double stack gives you twice whatever that power drop was worth. Not bad, we got the taps. We didn't suffer any casualties that wave. And only minor damage to a locker. So here's our next tap. Again, spawned pretty much right next to the library. We're going to go ahead and go three repair cost and two speed. And then we're going to get that locker upgraded. And I know I have enough money to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and upgrade that fence as well. So there's one pilot's locker. Alright, all three lockers are level four now. At which point we're going to go ahead and do this. Alright, Misfit was trying to die there. I guess he needed a free weapon. Now the only bad thing is dying during the wave can be detrimental because if you get multiple people down, things can go south really fast. Oh, of course that would stun me. Gotta get my stim. I'm gonna need to actually place a third barrier. So we'll move that barrier down. Now see how this is going to cost me 2744 if I was going to upgrade it, because I had to pay the repair cost. So I just paid the repair cost by repairing it with Ingenuity, and now I am good to go. So I'm getting that second layer of barriers out, which is the best I can do for right now. And the sole purpose of this is just to give us a little bit of extra time to deal with these enemies. Something's wrong with this thing. Keep stealing. Sniper. Of course, repairing the energy tap can be a nightmare, especially when there's enemy units with explosives. We're going to lose this tap. You really do not want to lose the taps, if at all possible. But it's far easier said than done to actually keep the energy taps. You need constant drop shot fire. Yes. Lucky shot. All right, so we lost a tap. It's very unfortunate that we lost a tap, but Goddamn son of a bitch. I am in the zone. We'll have to get that tap repaired. Well, we'll have to capture the tap again here at the end of the wave. Only two more. One more. 
Sadly, the enemies prioritize energy taps, which is honestly kind of dumb. They're damaging the tap. I've seen it countless times where an enemy will be like the final enemy alive and they'll just run away from you and go start attacking an energy tap. But things can always be intense when you're playing on Inconceivable or Masters. Obviously, we'll get some sentry guns up. Sentry guns aren't really the end-all be-all, though. You do need to make sure that the weapon lockers don't get destroyed. The weapon lockers inside the building should be okay for the most part. The hard thing is, like I said, keeping the energy tap alive. And unfortunately, energy taps don't count as fortifications, so you can't simply repair them via precision repair running a robotics expert. You are dead. Guardian spotted. another barrier and then we can get some sentries decoys are personal preference upgraded a barrier barrier <laughs> we've got company all right please be a good boss warden wait wardens and a kestrel okay nice Good thing we had the whole double pilots. You cannot kill me. We got three down. Two down in the back of the base. I'm here. And I was trying to get my stim, but I'm not going out like this. Yeah, I just I don't like playing this map. Move your ass. Get over here. Don't you dare kill that energy tap. That's a prime example of what I was talking about earlier, where an enemy will just disregard you and go straight for your energy tap. As you've seen, that Theron guard 
was interested in me, but then he just decided that, you know what? Yeah. I'm gonna take out the energy tap. But it doesn't really matter where you set up, unfortunately. This tap, or this map is just... Yeah, it's something to say the least. And then, of course, the next energy tap, which that seemed to be the most common spawn location, is up there on the balcony. It's almost like the game devs really intended you or wanted you to fight from that balcony location, which I could see back in Gears 3, maybe possibly even that strategy being viable in Gears 4, but it's really not viable on Master and Incon for uh, Gears 5. The flying enemies will just shred you, and with more aggressive enemies on, they run through your fortifications so quickly. Now the next thing that we can do is we can get some relatively strategically placed assistance, but uh, it's difficult. It's super difficult, the placement, because we have to place it in a manner where these shock sentries will not actually interfere with the mobility and usefulness of the weapon lockers. So obviously your pilots and your demo or your tack, depending on what you have, they're going to be rotating around their lockers and they need to be able to rotate around their lockers freely in order to get their weapons and provide explosive fire support as fast as possible. Now, of course, we have two taps down because, you know, as I said, these enemies just absolutely love going for the energy taps. The energy taps are not counted as fortifications, so you can't repair them with precision repair. They also do not count as you building them or upgrading them. So any of the cards associated with fortifications, whether it be for the architect, the mechanic, the robotics expert, it just, just doesn't matter. Energy tap is full. I would put this map so far as my second most hated map currently for Horde. My most hated map for Horde is Pahanu because that map is just terrible on higher difficulty in every single possible sense. But I'm also not a big fan of Regency either. Regency is a close second right now. I'd say tied with uh, with this. Let's do this. You do have a little bit more room to move around on Regency. You don't have the mo room to move around on this, unfortunately. We got to get that sentry right in the corner there. You can still get past it, but the shock sentry allows us to provide a little bit of fire support not much but we can provide a little bit I can't even pick up misfits tags for some reason it won't let me
They just love to keep destroying these energy taps. As you can see, these waves are definitely kind of hairy. Now, of course, you could always use the strategy of putting out more barriers. More barriers would buy you a little bit of time. That Not that much time, though. Me. And, of course, he shoots me and hits the energy tap. Energy tap Dealing quite a good chunk of damage. I'm not really too worried about this energy tap right here. I'll repair it just on the off chance that it does survive because it's only going to be a few hundred to repair. Literally only cost me 300 to repair that, so there's really no reason not to. Unless you know the tap is absolutely going to be destroyed. Yep, I can't get uh, I can't get misfits tags. I don't know what killed them this time. I just love how that pouncer could frickin' hit me while I was behind cover. Luckily, we only have one more wave. Securing the tap. Barrier repair. Uh, of course, that tap I bothered to repair is almost destroyed, but eh, it is what it is. Golden. We'll take this sentry to level four, put it back in the corner so you see that covers the front door. We do want to take some fire off of us. So I put a decoy out front. Barrier upgrade. Ah, oh, good. Trap 
There's a last resort barrier. Oh boy, of course it had to be a Wakatu. I'm focusing on playing repair. We've got the one shock turret in here to cover. We've got an electric fence so that we can at least keep enemies out. And another set of barriers. You'll notice I'm not using my ultimate because my ultimate, when activated, can lag the game and, well, we don't want to die. Another pro tip is you can actually repair a pilot silverback. Not only can you heal it, but you can restock like the salvo ammunition. And this Wakatu is just, you know, under the ground farting, so I'm going to go ahead and use my ultimate. You'll notice the game freezes for a second. Which is really dumb. I, I like the fact that they went and improved the usefulness of the mechanics ultimate. From those really annoying crappy tracker balls to something a little bit more useful. Definitely higher damage output. However, the fact that it lags the game out for everyone that's playing it, even though it's only a second to second and a half, is just ridiculously frustrating. And then, of course, when dealing with the cockatoo over here, not only do you have the extremely small chance, but definitely real chance of the bird glitching out and never returning. By the way, check out my previous video if uh, you want to see how that glitch happens but uh, this bird can show up literally inside of your base and he can spit in multiple directions at the same time so the Wakatu can effectively wipe an entire team without really trying Of course, having pilots that can bring the freeze is extremely helpful. And there's the signature medal for the final kill. Even though the final kill was on himself. Well, there you go, guys. Horde Frenzy, Master Difficulty, On the Map Mercy. This map is the new map for the second content drop in Operation 7. And, of course, we got four skill cards. Two greens, one blue, one gold, and uh, a time star. Eh, not bad. Not great, but definitely not bad. If you do have any questions, comments, suggestions... Um, anything like that, just feel free to leave a comment and I will get back to you. I'm very glad that we were able to get that done, but, uh, that was, that was definitely a chaotic map. So bear that in mind. That is not a map that I would recommend doing without a coordinated team, but you can see we have the master difficulty, uh, fire. So it's counted it as being completed on master difficulty 
and then I will be doing another video showing how to do this on the 1 to 50 game but with the way this map is if we go ahead and look at it we're probably going to be setting up in the same spot you either want to set up in the library which has its own pros and cons or you want to set up in the sanctuary but that has usually more cons than pros so end result is a very hairy and uh, very easy to die library run. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, my brothers and sisters at Legion, stay frosty.